Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce. Welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. And before I get this video kicked off, I want to throw this out there. So, this channel started as talking about a bunch of different topics, and I would like to continue doing that on the channel. However, I am aware that the YouTube algorithm does not like that in any way at all, right? And I don't want to get pigeonholed into only talking about the Ripperverse. I still want to do a ton of Ripperverse videos. Like, that's going to be a mainstay on the channel. But there are other things I'd like to talk about. For instance, as soon as I'm done recording this video, I'm going to be recording another video talking about how I went from being ambivalent about anime to how I kind of started liking anime and even how I have a top five right now so let me know if that's something that you guys want to see more on the channel and also if you guys do I, apparently the like button works hit the like button as much as you guys can and share the video with people uh, because apparently that breaks the YouTube algorithm and they can't keep up with actual people recommending the content so without any further ado let's get into today's beer this is a back pocket brewing Murder Horn Golden Ale. This is a Belgian style, so let's uh, let's get this cracked. I'm gonna crack it over here because I don't want to clip the mic. Mm, I love me some golden ales too. Let's see, and I will only be drinking one of these. Interesting golden ale. Okay, mm. that's not bad. It's got a little bit of a creamy flavor to it. It is also 10.2% alcohol by volume. Very, very <laughs> glad that I read that. So that's not a... You don't slam that beer. You, you sip it. I'll have one more sip. Ooh, that is very good. Let me know what you guys are drinking down below. And in today's video, we are talking about Darren Fontano and Isom. And what possibly was their backstory that could have led them from being friends into being enemies or frenemies or some variation of the two we don't know we've gotten very little about it i thought about doing a theory crafting about darren fontano but we were kind of given a lot about his personality already i guess we could theory craft about his motivations but i'm gonna cover that here so i'm not going to go into a theory crafting about darren fontano because i find um friends growing up together and then eventually splitting paths and uh the road that led to that i find that a much more interesting thing to talk about and i can talk about darren fontano in this so in the isom trailer video we come to understand that Darren Fontano, I believe, if I know the video correctly, uh, Darren and, and may, it was also on the Ripperverse website, but Darren and Isom were buddies when they were, when they were kids. And they diverged and they went separate paths. So one guy became this awesome mob boss and the other guy went and became an awesome superhero. So what led to this? I have two theories about what could have led to this the first theory that i have is that both of them are running around doing some hood shit and during doing the hood shit uh avery isom didn't he didn't really feel right about it but it's like where he came from and so how do you get ahead in those rough neighborhoods right how do you get ahead when you're doing that stuff so all of a sudden, Avery gets his powers from some version of an event that causes him to get his powers. And when he gets his powers, he starts using them uh, in a way that is to help people, that is uh, kind of in the face of what Darren's doing. Now, Darren doesn't get powers, and this causes a schism in between them, right? And Darren's the type of guy that kind of wants power, uh, maybe not like super, super greedy for it, but definitely like, no, this is the road you go for power. What you're doing is stupid, and it's going to ruin everything that we've done up to this point. And so <clears throat> I think that that could be one of the easiest ways to write a splintering off between the two people is that one wants to go one way, one wants to go the other way. And I think that we will always think of lines like, look at all this power that you have and what you choose to do with it. And so 
that is something that I absolutely believe could just be a very classic way to get two friends uh, to uh, just become enemies. One gets powers, one doesn't, and they diverge from there. The other thing that I think could happen is that there is, you know, Isom has his powers. They know each other. They're chilling with each other. And they're doing things. And there could be some sort of a loss that happened. Maybe Darren's doing under-the-table de deals on the side. And Avery, Isom, is, you know, going out and doing hero stuff. And they kind of find out about it. And it causes a death that uh, divides them, right? There's a death that happens, whether it's due to Darren, whether it's due to a mistake that maybe Isom makes. And all of a sudden, now, these two childhood friends are on the opposite side of each other. And those were the two strongest theories that I could think of um, about why these two childhood friends who grew up in the same area together, who Lord knows what they saw together, if they saw anything together, and how they kind of got to this place. I and, and, and that's what's really interesting to me. And I like roads like this. And again, you talk about Darren Fontano's personality. He's a shot caller. He's, you know, a man you don't want to mess with. You don't cross this guy, right? He knows, you know, he knows what the business is and he is the business and controls it, right? And so obviously that's going to be a part of his character as what Eric July told us about in the Isom uh, uh, trailer video. So going into the backstory of how they've gotten separated is really interesting. I found that those were the two most logical, right? The just, if you think of Western storytelling, comic book storytelling, you very much could see how Isom getting his powers could cause a rift because Isom's like, no, I want to use my powers for good. And Darren's like, man, you could rule the streets. You could, you could do everything that you would want with these powers. And yet you're going out there and you're doing, you're, you're doing shit for free. Like, no, he's like, no, goodness, goodness comes at a price. And you know, the, the price ain't cheap. He could be that type of character. I, I very much see Darren Fontano possibly going down that road. The other reason I thought of the, the, the other option here as Isom has powers, he's doing his hero stuff and maybe he kind of knows that Darren's doing some illegal stuff and it comes to a head and um, when it comes to a head, it could be because of the death of somebody uh, and, you know, Darren's like, look, dude, I don't have powers. I have to make my way in the world how I got to make my way in the world. You got powers. You can do what you want. You and, you know, you can't just lord this crap over me. He could kind of do that playing into some of the jealousy themes and maybe not necessarily jealousy themes, although it would sound like that. But it's just kind of one of those like, look, this is the. I was born in this jungle and this is no this is how I know how to operate in this jungle, right? This is I'm a predator in this jungle and I got to operate like this. And you got superpowers and so now you can you don't have to play by the rules of the jungle like the rest of us normal people, but I still do. And that I I think that it would be something more like that is recognizing the difference between powered folk and non-powered folk. Um so what would be the interactions between these two. Obviously, they're going to have this frenemy type thing, right? Like, hey, I'm not going to I'm not going to do anything to you. You don't do anything to me. But all of a sudden, Isom starts kicking down the doors of people who uh work for Darren, who are uh in league with him and it's costing Darren money and it's ruining the system that he has set up in his area, his local control area. And I think that's what leads into the conflict is that uh, Isom's like, look, dude, we were friends once, but that person I know is gone. Or Isom could say the person that I knew w doesn't exist anymore. On the other side of it, it's Isom says, I'm not the same person I was when I ran with you. That could be. Uh, th that's the other side of this too, is which one of them changed, right? Because a change happened somewhere. Obviously, they grow apart. They grow. I've grown apart from people that I've known in my life, and I've grown apart from friends that I've had. And the fact of the matter is, is I don't really have any like 
I, I, I don't think about that in a bad way. I'm just like, no, you, you know, you grew in this way and I grew in this way and our thoughts diverge. And it's not like we're mad at each other or anything. It's just like, you're not the, the, the person that I knew in high school and I'm not the person you knew in high school. And to be perfectly honest, as adults, we just, we don't gel, you know, we just don't mix. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. It's just, you got your life. I got my life. Is that something that and I think that I, I think that that's going to be one of those things that's the, again very relatable Western style tori- storytelling because it relates to so many people. And I think any direction that they go with here is going to be relatable to the reader. Um, so the you know I'm just going to leave it there. I I I need to formulate. I I I thought I had a third idea there for just a second, but I need to formulate that one a little bit better. So you know what I'm going to leave it here. What do you guys think? What is the reason that they split? Who changed? Was it Darren that changed or was it Isom that changed? What were they involved in before? Were they good kids and one strayed the path or were they bad kids and one strayed the path? What happened to cause these two childhood friends to separate and become on opposite sides of justice not the law because the law is broken but the opposite side of justice so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below because i am pretty sure that's gonna be the story and i know i a lot of it's kind of in like generality it's like oh the type of story that they can tell to get here um, and there's a couple different ways they can do it. I can't obviously be super specific because I don't know. I'm not Eric July. But if you guys want to tell me how did they go from friends to enemies, let me know in the comments below because you guys are killing it. You guys have so many great topics and talking points, and I am just excited to keep reading um, and interacting with you guys as much as humanly possible. And let me know also if you guys would like to see um, how I went from it's probably going to be like a video like I used to hate anime because I can't be like well you know you know, I used to be ambivalent towards anime and it was for some people and it really wasn't for me but there was a couple that I liked that's a really long title I don't want to go with that one but let me know I'm going to do that video and then I'm going to give you guys my top five animes as of like today um, that I love to watch now and that I think are great so you guys let me know in the comments below Darren Fontano versus Isom and about if you would like to see that type of content on this channel. And if you do hit the like button for me, because I want to break YouTube's algorithm. I want to, I want it broken. I want people to be able to shine through and not a computer program. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. And I look forward to seeing you all next time right here on a drink with crazy cheers. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.